if you now knowing what you know now thinking back on you as childhood JD um (laughs) what type of situations or things do you feel you did to mask to just kind of play it off and be high functioning as they call it Welcome back to Mom Nation from the Heart. And now a word from our sponsor. Hello, this is Veronica with Spa Specialist Beauty Within, where we believe that beauty truly starts from within. Being healthy on the inside will definitely show on the outside. You can purchase gift certificates, buy products, book your spa services, or even holistic coaching right from our website at www.spaspecialistbeautywithin.com or call us at 603-858-1556. Have an amazing day. Hey, everybody. It is From the Heart with Mom Nation, our podcast. We are here, as you know, every two weeks. So that's twice a month. And we are back with another episode of From the Heart. So here we share inspirational stories, useful uh, information, and discuss a variety of women-related topics. I am Katie, your founder. And with us, I'd love to welcome our beautiful co-host, Sherry, our co-founder. Hey, Sherry. Hey, how are you? Good. How's life treating you? Oh, it's fabulous. Busy, busy, busy. Of course. Moms are, right? You look absolutely amazing. How have your workouts been? Um, Great. Our team is so cute. I love that. We have like check-ins every day. Your team for the fitness challenge? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ours is cute too. We have quite, oh my gosh, uh, JD. Everybody, this is JD, Jen Duncan. She's with Team Ebowazy, so she works with me and she is our guest today. Um, But JD, just to catch you up. So Sherry and I are doing the fitness challenge and Mm -hmm. it's a month long. And so every week, so we have a team that we're on with, right? And then every week we have a different challenge that we have to do. Mm -hmm. This week, our team challenge, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. We're so behind for those of you that are on teams against me now, you know. Um, it's 5,000 jumping jacks. Wow. And 1,000 leg lifts. And there's only five people on the team. And so oh we have gosh. to accomplish this this week. But so anyway. what do you do? Do you like break it up or what? Typically. Like yeah. I don't know how Sherry does it on her team, but we break it down and we say, okay, that means X amount per day for you. And you know, everybody gets the same. Is that what you guys do? Yeah, pretty much. Unless somebody like we had somebody in our group have COVID Well, their family had COVID. So our team was so cute. And they were like, Hey, worry about your kids, worry about you. And then we kind of absorbed the rest of us. So it was cute that some of these people don't know each other before this challenge and they were ready to jump in. So that's awesome. How sweet though. And it's like kind of mirrors, you know, other things that you do, like groups of friends or family or something like that. I mean, you got to lean on each other, you know? Yes. So that's good. I'm so glad that it's going well for you. Our team's cute too. It's been really fun and exciting. Um, But we are not here to talk about fitness today. (laughs) That was a couple of podcasts ago. We are here with the very famous household name, JD from Team Evo AZ. You may know her as the New Build Ninja. She has a few other nicknames, nice ones. Cause we love her. <laughs> the other day we were walking home from school and someone said hi or whatever. And, and Munch is like, do you know everyone? <laughs> I was like, hey, maybe. Yeah. If not, <laughs> yeah, I know you. Munch. your mom is famous. So you'll have to deal with that forever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she could like, just, how do you know them? Like we were running into people at Safeway. We run like dance moms and it's just like, how do you know everyone? <laughs> That's the cutest <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> right. She'll, you'll like, have to hire her to be your TikTok detail. More people know getting her, all this on really. TikTok. Yeah, she's so good at it. She got so bummed because she got banned in the from TikTok. Oh no! <laughs> Start all over. She got uh, banned. Yeah, it was just it was something stupid. She didn't realize, but like they banned her account. She's like, ugh. I had three hundred sixty followers. Now I need to start all over. <laughs> Dang, dude, that's a lot for a little kid. She's only know, seven. A little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Oh, anyway, 
you know, this is a great segue into what we're going to talk about today is talking about your daughter, talking about little kids. Bring us back, JD. So everybody, we are talking with JD about some newfound discoveries that she has she has figured out here in her wisdom riddled age of adulthood. Um, <laughs> so take us back though, JD, set the stage. Who was Jen as a little girl? Bring us all the way back to like Munch's age. Oh and, my gosh. Uh, right? Uh, well, things were so different back then. Like, you know, we didn't have like all the screens and everything and, and craziness, but, um, and ADHD wasn't a thing back then. Like, or even autism, you know, like, now looking back, I can probably pinpoint who had it, you know, but it just wasn't something that was recognized at all. Um, at maybe when I was a kid, they were starting to research on like boys, because boys, it, the stereotype is like, you know, little boys are hyperactive and don't focus and stuff like that. Um, girls, like, a lot of girls are good at masking, they call it, and like, just kind of getting through life. I mean, as we have to, right? Like, makes sense. It's adult. training for momhood. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, a couple of the things that I struggled with the most, um, I couldn't focus in school. Like, I just wasn't into it unless it was like art class. I was just out. Um, the teachers always said I talked too much. <laughs> Either I talked too much or didn't talk at all. Like, it was kind of like both extremes. Um, I had trouble keeping friends. Like I never understood why some people didn't want to hang out with me anymore. Like I just didn't, I just didn't know. Um, I had pretty poor impulse control. Like, um, like I started staying home alone when I was about Munch's age seven because my mom, both parents worked. Uh, mom worked close by, so it wasn't so bad. But at that point, like, nobody was there to give me crap if I like ate a snack or something. Right. So like, I'm like, Oh, nobody's home. Let me just like raid the pantry or whatever. Well, we didn't have a pantry, but like just raid the cabinet. Um, so like my impulses were just not controlled. Well, you know, um, I always had trouble. I was always in trouble because of my report cards. Right. So like, you know how they used to like slide them into the little like Brown thing and you'd bring them home show your parents and I was always terrified to come home because I get in so much trouble for not doing well in school um and they always put me in extra classes for reading that drove me nuts because like I could read fine but if it was boring topics I cannot comprehend it and then tell you what I read you know so it was always like extra reading or English class um the biggest thing I struggled with were like sensory issues though. Like um, I would never wear my hair down. So people would be like, what are you a tomboy or something? Um, I didn't, I don't like the feeling of things like heavy and hot, you know, I don't, I don't know why I live in Arizona, honestly. <laughs> um, a super picky eater, like certain textures and stuff. I just can't do it or else it'll just like throw up. It's terrible. Um, I don't like tags on my shirts. I don't like you know, being on the beach with like wet sandy feet and stuff. And I, everyone always thought that was weird. They're like, you're so weird. So it was kind of tough. And so, so you're experiencing these things and they're different. They're different than other people or, you know, the majority of other people. Yeah. And so as a child, you don't have the ability to think that through right? And no, be like, oh, so I'm just different. And, yeah. and that's fine. And, and we're good. Like, as a child, emotionally, this has to have started to disturb you. Yeah, I mean, I never understood why some people were so cool. And like, like, you guys are cool. You're like witty. And like, you can think of things on the fly. But like, I just, someone tells me a joke. And I'm like, okay, like, as a kid, I just, I couldn't come back with anything cool. Like I always wondered why my brain just freezes. Um, it makes sense now. <laughs> um, one thing, the biggest strength though that I had as a kid was like, I was super artistic. So in art class, I always killed it. Like I could actually hyper-focus on it and do a good job. Um, I was also amazing at playing an instrument. So 
in fourth grade is when you got to choose what you wanted to play. And my mom, so she rented the flute like a couple months before school started and she taught me, but I picked it up so fast that I already knew it by the time school started. And it was so good. And then I, um, I switched to the saxophone in sixth grade because I just wanted to change it up. And then in seventh grade, someone asked me once, they're like, do you want to be a band geek? And I was like, no. And I quit. Like, <laughs> this is where I wish, like, I could have processed it and be like, no, screw you. I'm going to keep going. Right. Like, they had me playing with the eighth graders and stuff. It was, it was fun. But, you know, influences, <laughs> like, middle school is the worst. But, like, social situations were tough. Well, right. And you're, you being a kid probably didn't understand, well, this person's probably just way jealous because yeah. I'm really excelling at this. Mm -hmm. And instead you processed and internalized that in a different way. Yeah. It's pretty sad actually to look back on. Um, if I knew, if I, I mean, you always say if, if, but if I knew back then I would have just kept going because it was something I was really good and could focus on. Um, the only time I ever got student of the month in school was for band. So that tells you something. I never got like the awards or anything like that. Just band. <laughs> so um, it, it does, it takes a toll on your, your mental state too. So a lot of people who do have ADHD have also have anxiety and depression issues because they don't know what's wrong with them. Like, the anxiety part is you go on overload like really fast, like just little things could set you off, like off the cliff or something. So it's a little tough. I have a question. Yeah. Around like women or girls with the masking, because that is pretty common mm -hmm. for females um, with autism or mm -hmm. ASD. So if you now, knowing what you know now, thinking back on you as childhood JD, um, yeah. <laughs> what type of situations or things do you feel you did to mask, to just kind of play it off and be high functioning as they call it? Mm, I don't know. It was kind of tough as a kid. I mean, sometimes I just preferred being alone because then you don't have to deal with any situations, you know, like just go hang by yourself or with like one friend. Um, I noticed with Munch, like she does great when she's one-on-one -on -one with her best friend. Um, but I mean, sometimes just not saying anything is like the best thing when you're trying to mask, like in school, you just don't participate and then you won't get like, you won't have to take the criticism or anything like that. So I know that's not good, but it is. Well, <laughs> I think it's so interesting that you have your experiences from you being a child mm -hmm. and from our world, not having that be so common or be even kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. And then now you as a mother get to see Munch going through similar experiences, but obviously the science here is totally different today than it was then. For and sure. even the, just, it's not as taboo. And mm -hmm. so how do you feel that your experiences help you with Munch now? That's definitely something we're going to cover, right? Like a few lines down, but yeah, it, it helps me a lot. Like to, when I see her going through certain things, like she's afraid to try something new, you, I take a step back. I'm like, I remember what that was like, you know, like going to dance class and starting a new class could be nerve wracking to her. And I'm like, oh, I was like that too like, just give it a shot. And if you don't like it, then we'll talk about it. But usually if I'm able to kind of sit her down and like, kind of look at her, you know, like, like face to face kind of thing and just talk through it. She, lo she loves it after she does it. So like she started um, like a mini aerial arts class with like the silks and like all those rings and stuff. And she was scared at first, but she, she absolutely loved it. So it does help just like talk to them on their level and just explain everyone gets scared. Um, I've been through it too. Just give it a try. And you know, if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out, but you don't know unless you try. So a big difference. That was a great question, Sherry. My mm -hmm. next question is sort of similar, but I'll, I'll change it a little bit. 
Um, <laughs> it sounds like a big difference in your childhood in that experience. And then your daughter's childhood in that experience is this level of support that she has. For sure. And um, through no fault of, I mean, you know, I'm, I, I love your parents. I don't blame your parents or anybody that was involved in your, in your yeah. childhood or your upbringing, because this is the eighties versus, yeah. you know, 2020 here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of a big jump in terms of technology and in terms of us as, you know, society as a whole and growing and understanding other people. Um, but it sounds like she has quite the support system. How did not having that support affect you as you were, I mean, going through, these are such impressive, impressionable ages. And then being in young adulthood, I don't know of any other point in my life that's been more difficult than being a teenager, to be honest. Oh, yeah. The teens were, oh my God. Um, actually, middle school was the worst. Like that was the hardest because you're really like going through a huge transition at that point. Um, but I, I read a book that said the first seven years of your life shape like your, your thoughts and stuff as an adult. So for me, it was, there was a lot of like self-confidence issues. Um, I didn't think I could do things. Um, I mean, my dad was pretty tough on me, so he was a Marine. So he doesn't, I I know he's got it too. Like we know my mom and I were like, oh yeah, he never finished any projects or anything like that, but their mindset is different. Our parents, um it was it was tough honestly growing up like I was yelled at a lot and it's just something you got I just had to get through it because there it wasn't a thing back then so a lot of it did carry into my adulthood too with mindset and stuff like that right right and then being treated like that well why can't you just do what all the other kids do is (laughs) is probably even worse for your your processing and the overwhelm that you felt. Yeah, I mean, I quit dance classes because, you know, I had gained weight from reading the pantry and like, I was too, I, I mean, I wasn't huge, but I was like too chunky to wear like the two pieces that they wanted them to wear. So I was like, all right, I'm out. Mm-hmm. You know, like I didn't deal with it head on. I was just like, all right, well, peace out. You know, I'm mm-hmm. not going to deal with that. But it's kind of a bummer because I see how fun it is for Munch doing her dance. And it could have been fun for me too. Um, right. One of the biggest turning points for me was in high school, actually. So middle school was just a wreck. Like I had bullies and like, it was just crazy. I don't even want to talk about it. But um, my guidance counselor in high school, I was doing so bad. Like in ninth grade, I just, I skipped classes. Like I just didn't want to be there. It was boring. Um, Even a class that I liked, photography class, I used to skip that and go to the lunchroom and just hang out, you know? I mean, like teenagers, they just want to just hang out. Chill. Yeah. So my guidance counselor was like, he helped me. He was like, why don't you try going to the vocational school? If you go to school half day at your regular school, they bus you over to the county vocational school. So people did like cosmetology, um, like electrician stuff. Um, I actually went into um, like drafting and CAD stuff because I wanted to design houses. Like, that's all I ever did as a kid was draw floor plans. I mean, go figure, right? (laughs) That's really funny. I know. So once I started that in 11th grade, I did amazing. Like A's across the board because I was super interested in it. Yeah. It was easy for me to focus on. Yeah. Um, So that's one of the strengths is like when you find something you love, it's easy to hyper focus. Like if I want to go do something creative, I can definitely knock that out. Yep. The hardest part is just the mundane stuff like regular school classes. I'm like, whatever. Like, I don't care. (laughs) You know, my Um, husband experienced something similar as uh, growing up in the eighties. Also, um, he's, I think probably he's ADHD. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I I think he was diagnosed at some point in his life, Mm -hmm. but I don't even know that for sure. But what he went through and he's extremely similar. If, if it's boring, dull information, like don't even expect him to read it and comprehend it. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But if it's about politics, the man knows everything, right? Everything. And I'm like, but you got to read to know that. Right. Oh yeah. I can read that stuff. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, okay, I don't understand, but it sounds like you understand. Jamie. <laughs> yeah. It's like when, like when I'm looking up like floor plans and like 
neighborhoods and all that. I love that stuff. Right. But, you know, certain mundane admin kind of stuff, like it just, it's hard. It's hard to like turn your brain on and focus on it. Mm-hmm. And I know that drives people like you crazy because like, <laughs> why? Because I, I can focus on everything. I love that. Like, I wish I could. <laughs> like, it's not something that you want to deal with, but it's just something it just is. Um, from when we met with, um, we met with a therapist for months. She said that it's like a def- deficiency in your brain. Like, like your frontal lobe is like smaller, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't process as well as, you know, a neurotypical brain. I got, wait, let me show you. Can I show you that picture real quick? Yeah. Okay. It might look funny, but let's see. This will give a good visual because I'm a visual person. Um, hold on one sec. So this picture is, dang, it's not opening. Of course. <laughs> okay, here we go. This might look big and funky, but on the left is a normal brain. You see it's like firing everywhere. Like that's probably your brain. <laughs> like, you know, you get all this, these like amazing like thoughts and you can focus on everything. Um, this is the ADHD brain and it's less active. Um, so let me stop sharing. So from research, I know medication is taboo for a lot of people, mm-hmm. but what that does is they're, they're like, are you giving my kid math? No, it's not math, you know, <laughs> but it is a stimulant to help your brain get to that normal level because it's um, deficient in dopamine. So one of the reasons a lot of people become addicts, binge eaters, um, they drink too much is because they're chasing that dopamine because you don't have it. So I know mean, exercise does help too. So yeah, that's a dopamine that, release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you truly have it and you take stimulant medications, it actually calms you down and helps you focus. That's so, so interesting. Who, I know someone who doesn't have it, it'll get them high and they'll just be running around like crazy, you know? That's Ariana. So Ariana has ADHD and I let her drink coffee because it helps before school. It helps her actually focus. A lot of people do that. Oh, they do Mountain Dew too um, for kids. I mean, there's a lot of sugar, but I didn't want to do that with her. Um, But yeah, I mean, so there's a lot of taboo around it, but if it helps you, I say go for it. You'd either try natural or medications. Um, I am not medicated yet but I'm looking into it. (laughs) But um, as I got into adulthood, some of the struggles that I had, um, you know, I struggle to focus on like mundane tasks, keeping the house in order. Like, do you know how many laundry baskets of crap I have that need to be put away? (laughs) Like, like I'll get the itch and I'll be like, okay, let's get it all done. And then for weeks, it'll just be like dirty clothes and then four clean baskets. (laughs) So it, it's, it's hard to just like get yourself to do it. Um, a lot of times people think I'm not listening to them. Chris says that he's like, do you even listen to anything I say? Like, yeah, sometimes <laughs> like you go into la la land a lot. Um, I get overloaded really easily. So like if a lot of stuff is coming at me at once and like lately I've just been like, okay, give me a minute. Cause I'll say something I don't want to, or it just gets too crazy. Um, and then like, if I have to like clean the house or something, or much is like this too. Like if I tell her to clean your room, she'll just stare at me. Like, what do you mean? (laughs) I'm like, clean your room. But if you give her a list with like bullet points, that helps a lot. Like put your clothes in the basket, um, pick up your toys, stuff like that. So that's one way of helping her to like kind of adapt and get things done. Yeah. Do you have an IEP in place for her already? No. So we, um, we're actually going to do a 504. She gotcha. doesn't need an IEP actually. Um, she just great with academics. It's just getting her to focus on it. Um, her, her preschool teacher is the one that actually noticed it. Um, and she didn't want me to send her into school early but she was reading by the time she was four. So like, 
we were in such a weird place with her. Um, I mean, she's almost eight now and she's in third grade. Her kindergarten teacher was amazing. Um, but she was the one who did start telling us like, hey, holding her back and having her be the oldest in class probably wouldn't benefit her because academically she was great, but she'd be cartwheeling across the floor in the classroom instead of listening, like getting in line to go to lunch or whatever. Um, so that was one kind of indicator that she, I mean, she's, she was just immature. So at that point we were like, okay, well, let's see what happens. Um, her first grade teacher was really the one because she has it and her son has it that really told us she's like, she absorbs the information and she knows it, but she's, she'd rather be doodling or off in space or whatever. Um, and that was a struggle for her. Like she knew the material, but she wasn't getting it done. So that's when we, we actually contacted a doctor and we we're like, okay, let's go get her evaluated. <laughs> so this evaluation was like an hour long, right? <laughs> and I, we were sitting in her chairs and she was upside down like being all crazy and everything. And the doctor just looked at me and like nodded, like, yes, <laughs> yes, she has it. <laughs> so that kind of brought us down our, our path for starting medication for her. So you first started noticing preschool teacher mentioned something, uh -huh. school kind of uh, communicated with you about that. Yeah. Sherry, when did, when did you first noticing your daughter was going down the same path and kind of like similar question to you, what happened after that? Um, it was the same thing with like school. Um, one of her teachers was amazing and also kind of said, Hey, this might be something. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we went, she did have speech her kindergarten year. So she was working with a speech pathologist. But then first grade, same exact time period is when um, I took her to actually Melmed in Arizona and they diagnosed her with ADHD, but also ODD at the time. And so she does have an IEP. Um, there's a lot of like home stuff going on at that time though, too. So I definitely think that that was an impact or like something that the environment definitely contributed to it. But um, what is she, what does the ODD look like? What oppositional kind of defiant disorder so because of our home env environment being so i don't know it was terrible yeah, um <laughs> she was acting out and mm -hmm. a lot of it was going against my other daughter oh, okay. um and so like it was it was a safety issue right because yeah she was only a baby at the time and so mm -hmm. it like i couldn't go to the bathroom without walking out and finding her putting a pillow over the baby's face. So like, it was bad, right? There was like some crazy stuff happening. Um, but all of that's gone now because the environment's drastically different. Right. So, um, that is kind of, and it was funny, not funny, haha, but it was interesting because the teachers didn't see that side of her either, but I think it was the trigger of what was going on in her environment. And then her baby sister having that connected uh -huh. aspect. Um, but you know, working Melmed was amazing. We also went in that for that like hour long consult and uh -huh. they did all the ratings and everything to see like where on the spectrum you fall. Uh -huh. Um, and I was a hundred percent that parent that was like, no meds, no meds. Right. But I quickly changed my tune because at the end of the day, like this is my kid and I want to make whatever is going to help her. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. And you know, we did behavior modification for a while. We did anger management classes, all of these things, which did help. But at the end of the day, the meds helped her in that classroom environment. And now she's off of them. She doesn't need them and she excels and she does fine. Yeah. So I, sometimes as parents, like we have to be open-minded too. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. And like, um, I mean, the meds will help you get kind of to a baseline, but you also have to learn like how to get through life, you know, like, sure, you can have these meds, but if you don't know what to do in certain situations, then 
it's not going to work. So, so I guess that's my next question. So Mm -hmm. you, you guys got them tested, you got the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Um, What then was the recommended treatment? Did the doctor just say, Hey, get them this prescription and then we'll see what happens from there. Or was it like, Hey, we'll get them this prescription and then we're going to do X, Y, Z other things. Like how, what was your experience Mm -hmm. there? In our case, uh, we see a pediatric nurse practitioner, psychiatrist, something like that. She's the one who handles the meds, but we meet with her every three months and she just kind of checks in, you know, sees how things are going, you know, gives her some suggestions with some issues that she's having. Um, We were going to a counselor for a while. It's just very expensive because they don't take our insurance. Um, And she would take her into like the playroom and they would do like play-based therapy. I was like, huh, what am I paying $140 for just to go play? But she does things to um, make certain reactions happen so that she can teach her how to get through certain things, if that makes sense. So kind of life skills that she might be struggling with that other kids don't. So there's, it's not just, hey, here are no. meds, even though it sounds like the meds are very, very helpful, but there's like yeah. some other sort of therapy um, involved. A lot of people do, uh, they call it occupational therapy, um, where they'll either have someone come to their house or go see someone and do similar stuff. Like, you know, they'll take them to the park and teach them about, you know, certain things that might happen to you or like how to deal with certain things. Um, but yeah, I mean, some people just take the meds and just do that, Mm -hmm. but it just depends on, I think how severe it is. And, and like Sherry said, probably your home life and all of that stuff makes a big difference Mm -hmm. for much like having her do like the dance and stuff. Like she does the competition dance and that helps her be really motivated to get towards a goal. You know, like she knows if she has to like she has to work hard on the certain dance that they want to get a certain trophy, you know? <laughs> so that's like a reward for her. Um, she does struggle though sometimes the dance. We had a little problem with her not participating because she wasn't focusing. So like, you know, like she doesn't really like ballet that much, but you have to take it if you want to be on the team. So that is a struggle for her, but I'm teaching her that if you want to get to this goal, sometimes you got to do things that you don't want to do, which I should teach myself that too. (laughs) Um, I think that that's a really good, um, like knowing now after we've been on this plan for years and years, I'm now seeing things like big picture that we did then that have now become fruitful. So Mm -hmm we did have the IEP and part of that is we meet twice a year, if not more. And, you know, of course they have these goals that they, your child is supposed to reach a certain percentage by the end of the year. But now that Ariana's older and she's a sophomore in high school, part of that is also getting to her to the point where she's going to vocalize, Hey, I need this. I need that. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you're five or however old, like that's, that's not something I'm, the advocate, but now it's great to see that their this plan is really designed to help them become the advocate for themselves sure. and working in college. That's huge. I know because I work with students that have disabilities as well, ADHD, autism, whatever. And at this point, there's no one else to advocate for you. You have to advocate for yourself. You know, so, I, the, now that you mentioned about the school, uh, college kids, you know, back when I used to work as an academic counselor, I wish I knew what I know now because I could have coached them better. You know, like I'd be talking to them like, why didn't you do your homework? (laughs) They're like, but (laughs) I mean, there's excuses, but there's also struggles too, right? (laughs) Yeah. But now understanding it helps me to deal with, you know, like help people more. So like now that I understand what my daughter's going through, instead of yelling at her, you know, we'll talk about it because it can get very frustrating for both. (laughs) I'm sure. And I love that. And I love that there's, you know, peaceful process here uh, for you guys and that you've found that what, how has life changed? So 
life before the diagnosis for your daughter and now life after diagnosis and having some processes put in place to help her. What can you give us an example of what's changed? Um, she's definitely able to focus more in school. Uh, so like she, the teacher she had in first grade, she actually had for second grade too. So she helped her with some things that help her focus better too, like the wobble chair and, you know, separating her for tests and stuff. But just knowing to ask for help is important. Um, like her third grade teacher is brand new to the school. So I explained to her, you know, some things that she struggles with and she's like, okay, I'll help her, you know, like separate her from like distractions. And, I mean, the medicine helps you, but it only goes so far. Um, like she's super cool with her. So the thing, I mean, we still struggle with it though. It's not like a cure all, you know, right now we're struggling a little bit with her, um, just like not having a whole lot of energy for some reason, like she's not her normal self. So we're kind of looking into some reasons for that too. Um, but every day is different. Like some days are amazing and some days are just not, um, like normal. So, yeah. Just like normal for sure. Um, there is a, there's a YouTube channel that I love um, called How To ADHD. And she has like super cool, like, um, like graphics. And she tells stories about herself and some struggles that you might have or like all kinds of different stuff. And that is super helpful for parents understanding like what they're going through and their kids. So watching a few of those, like, you know, sometimes my daughter would get like super upset if like her friends didn't like tell her to come outside with her, you know, <laughs> like there was an incident where we were telling her she needs to eat real quick and her friends went outside and they thought they were, she thought they were rejecting her. Aww. So like rejection sensitivity is a huge issue, kind of like, um, what do they call that? Like co, see, this is where my brain doesn't work. Like co Yeah, something like that like where you have anxiety, depression, rejection, sensitivity, that's all like kind of like, um, what are those charts where they all like come off each other? It's, I don't know. It looks like a spider, <laughs> but yeah, that's just one of the things that she deals with too. Um, that can be tough. So what made you decide at, as an adult to get <laughs> yourself tested? I mean, should I tell you? You're my boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, and just Pretend I'm not. <laughs> just, you know, struggling to get certain things done. I mean, obviously there's things in our industry that we have to do in real estate to get to the end goal, you know, sell a house, help a client buy a house. But I mean, there's some mundane tasks in there that are just kind of hard to focus on. It's just very hard for me to focus on. So, um, that that's just something I'm more aware of now. Um, I am going to see the doctor um, to see what kind of options I have, because if I can just get a little bit of a boost to get things done, that will benefit in so many other ways. You know, um, we've changed around our diet and stuff. So like, I think Chris is down like 30 pounds. I'm at like 27 now. So that's helping too. <laughs> that's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, making those changes also help too. So you got tested, you got a diagnosis, and then did they give you recommended treatment or you're still working through that? No, right? this girl, uh, the one that I did it through, she just does diagnosis and that's it. Oh. Um, there is a clinic called, it's ADHD Clinic of Arizona that are like doctors. They can act as your primary care too. Um, and that's who I'm going to go see. I got derailed a couple of weeks ago for other issues, but, um, I'm going to make an appointment and see what they think. Yeah. Because I imagine that just having the evaluation and just learning whatever you've learned, like that has to have affected your life. Oh my God. So I mourn, I actually mourned my childhood. So when I started looking back and I'm like, oh my God, like it was all there. And now I know, like, how could things have been different? You know, maybe I could have gotten treatment back in the day and not have gained weight and like dealt with all that kind of stuff. Um, 
but you kind of can't really look back. I'm kind of right. using it to help her get through and help her have a good life. It is a little hard as a parent not to try to live vicariously through your kid though. Yeah. So I'm like, oh yeah, you get to dance now and do all the stuff that I wanted to do. Um, but you got to try not to get too attached <laughs> or else you'll go crazy. Right. Right. But I mean, you're not even 40 yet. You have a lot of life to live. No. So yeah. learning this, um, you know, at a, it's still a relatively very young age. Mm -hmm. Awesome that we already know about it for your daughter. Right. So that's yeah. going to totally change the trajectory of her life mm -hmm. or the way her life, you know, might have gone. Um, but you still have quite a bit of life left in mm -hmm. you too. And so figuring this out at such an early age, must have been very beneficial to you or you it sounds like you're working through mm -hmm. these you know this new information and kind of coming to terms yeah. with things from it's way a back lot when the process honestly like it can get very overwhelming you're like oh my god it's just like so much <laughs> that's awesome well i'm so proud of you i mean it's it can't be easy um, you know, I've been through lots of things in my mm -hmm. adulthood too. And in my childhood that have, you know, needed guidance, we'll just say to get through. Um, and none of that's easy. None, it's not easy to kind of look at yourself and decide that there are things that need to be changed. Um, a lot of mindset work. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Just, bet. In, just in the last few years is when I embraced that and things got a lot better. Right. And just, just the acceptance of yourself at this point. I mean, when we're, um, you know, I had a, I don't want to say a similar childhood, but I did not accept myself as a child either. Mm -hmm. And then, so like coming into adulthood, I carried that in and then, yeah. you know, into adulthood and then finally getting to that point where I grew enough through guidance and therapy and yeah. things like that to be able to accept myself is giant. Like, no, you know what? I'm okay. I'm a unique person. We're all unique people mm -hmm. and we don't all have to be the exact same. Like, I don't know why we think we do when we're kids right. that we all have to be the exact same, but that would be a very boring place if we were like, I want to be the cool person with the cool hairstyle and like smart and everything. You're always comparing yourself always, yeah. even as an adult. Um, everybody's got something like, one thing I like about the mom nation group is like, when you put it out there, you'll notice that so many people are going through the same thing. So many. You're not alone. Yeah. So we're having a lunch in a couple of weeks. I'm excited about that. So we can all bounce ideas off each other. Right. You're having a group meetup about uh, either being ADHD yourself or having ADHD children, right? Yes. Or awesome. an autism too. So it's open for for anyone really to like, just talk about what you struggle with, what works, what doesn't work and just relate to other people. Cause a lot of times you feel alone yeah. in your journey and you don't think that other people understand. Yeah. So that's giant. Well, and I also think it's huge because kind of what you mentioned before we started JD is like, you know, you saw Beth's journey with it and yeah. Like you said, with the females with masking, it's mm -hmm. still hard to get a diagnosis as, yeah. as a female, right? Yeah. Because I saw Beth's process too. And then you, you know, hearing about yours. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes it's really important to, you know, get those ideas from mm -hmm. other people that have gone through it or maybe found a doctor that's willing to listen to you finally. Yes. So, Hey, where do I go? And so that's huge in itself, whether it's for your child or for yourself. Yes, the person that I did my evaluation with is the same one as Beth's, and her name is Lauren, and she struggles with the same thing, so we were really just, like, talking like friends, like, and she's like, do you ever sometimes feel like blah, 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 I'm, yes, like, I totally, totally do, and so it was really relatable, um, knowing that somebody else is going through the same thing, and being successful at it, too, like, she she found what she is passionate about and made it into her career, you know, and like, is, is able to relate and, ex, you know, express that passion to other people going through the same thing. Yeah. It's just like with anything and you're more likely to openly express anything to her because you know, she's not judging you. She goes through the right. same things or similar things. Yeah. I was like, do you take meds? She's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> but she looks like such a natural, like holistic, you know, I mean, you could be that too and need a little extra help. From what I've heard, it's like turning your brain on. Like one person said, I saw a meme that said, I didn't realize that life was supposed to be like this when they took it. <laughs> yeah. They're like, how have I gotten through life until now? Yeah. And I love that you're being vocal and I love that you're sharing about what's going on with you because I think that it's giant what you just said about having kind of a community Mm -hmm. because we can go out and we can get all the help, you know, from professionals, blah, blah, blah. But it's really, for me, the growth really happens in the community setting. Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, the, the understanding and the camaraderie and the connection just really happens there. So um, kudos, like super bravo to you for doing that. And because it's hard, right. It's hard to step outside of, I'm sure it's a comfort zone of sorts. Right. And Mm -hmm. so it's hard to step outside of that and be like, look, here I am. Yeah. To judge. I'm here for everyone to judge right now. Cause I'm saying all this stuff, you know what I mean? And I love that. You're just kind of like, I don't care, whatever, judge me if you want to, this is the path that I need to go down. And, And you're really attracting those around you to that support that trajectory and I think yeah. that's really cool. I used to be scared like I remember the first mom nation event I went to I was terrified right like I had social anxiety like crazy I'm like what's gonna happen who's gonna be here is there gonna be a place to sit like everything going through my mind is my project gonna be cool like <laughs> but I kind of I have adapted you know like I I'm, I'm totally cool with staying home like I will stay home all week but once you do put yourself out there, it's really cool to know like who else is dealing with the same things as you. So if anyone's scared, just just go out. Nobody cares like what you look like or if you're put together. I mean, we're all moms. <laughs> like- exactly. <laughs> I agree. Mm-hmm. Well, and like you said, we all have something, right? Like social yeah. anxiety. All of us have something. Right. And I know that regardless of what you have going on. I was terrified to go to my first event too. And Katie just up and couldn't come. So I went into Katie Banks's house, not knowing a single soul, right? But it turned out great. And once I was in there and I made friends, I was fine, but I sat in the car and Katie was like, I can't come. I contemplated leaving. I was going to turn around, but I had the kids and I told them we were going to do this cool thing at Katie Banks's house and (laughs) couldn't be a liar. So (laughs) And look, it all worked out. It's so funny that both of your first events were at the same person's house. (laughs) I I miss that so much. I I need a new welcome mat for our front. So maybe we can do that. Like we need one for our house and one for my mom. So people know where the packages go, you know? I like that. I like that idea. I talked to her over the weekend, actually. So maybe she will. Maybe she'll come to like someone's house closer in so more people can go. (laughs) Um, but no, I would drive for that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> just wow. uh, everyone's going through something. Um, worst case, if things go south, if you're at an event, you don't have to see them ever again. Just peace out. You know, <laughs> it's so true, so true. And I, I totally agree with both of you, ladies. It's definitely more enjoyable with a tribe. Yeah. Uh, my Over. goodness, JD, this has been an incredible conversation, and. I've learned so much about you just in this one hour. And I've known you for six years now. Um, So I know time flies when you're having fun. So this was incredible. And I appreciate you so much coming in and really just letting us have it and letting us have your story and your, your innermost thoughts and feelings. I can really appreciate that because I'm sure it wasn't super easy. So Thank you for that. And, and I mean, if this episode just hits one, one lady's ears that helps her and makes her day, like we've done our job here. Right. Yeah. And I'm so about it for hours. So yes, yes, we could that and new build homes like all day. <laughs> we could be on all day. Um, but anyway, uh, everybody out there, big round of applause for JD. Would you please? Because uh, she is an amazing, amazing woman. And I'm so, so proud of her and how far she's come along in her journey. And she actually really does kick ass in life, even though she has these things that, um, you know, that she's dealing with, but like both Sherry and JD have said, everybody has these things that they're dealing with. And so, you know, it's just kind of, it's kind of normal, right. To have things that are 
not normal. <laughs> not normal. I like that. Right, right. So, all right, everybody. Well, again, this was a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much, Sherry and JD. If you are interested in being a guest on the show, please follow us at Mom Nation USA. That is our handle. We are on Facebook, YouTube. Now we're on TikTok because of Sherry's awesomeness. And we are also on Instagram. So catch us there if you would, please. Also, I'm sure that you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform right now. So please do us a favor and follow us, subscribe, download these episodes and rate us because this really does help us grow a bit organically, a bit more organically and get this information out to the women that need to hear it. So thank you guys so much. It's been lovely. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Jenny. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.